guys, this is normal in the world. I think my father can see some very well. Don't get me It's scared me the wrong. But when I saw this, I found out that I have to go and pray because my father says that. But I stand safe to the fact that not uh, not guilty until proven innocent. Like, not guilty until proven, until proven innocent. Like, most of what I use, what I will say. Girls do a lot of shit these days, and it's probably just from this. Vice uploaded a particular video with regards to what they did, and give me the timing of that video within seconds. So, let's just double down here and see what it is. I'm not going to say anything with regards to this, I'm not going to talk about that. We're just going to watch it happen. You drop your thoughts in the comments. Let's go. Sally was approached by Andrew when she was 20. Due to fears of harassment from his fan base, she is withholding her real name. First night that I worked for him, Andrew bought me like five bottles of wine. So I got completely drunk because I'd never done webcam work. So I was very, very nervous. Then that night, we were just sitting on the bed and Andrew punched me in my arm. I went to the bathroom and cried. It really, really hurt to have someone just hit me in the arm for no reason. I was very confused. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> Sorry, I don't want to cry. It's OK. Um, so then when I came out of the bathroom, he was super, super nice. Like, from what I remember, Andrew didn't have any alcohol at all. It was literally just me. That night we cuddled and we ended up having sex and I was really, really drunk. That was my first night. Then it was kind of like every single night I would work, but as soon as he handed me my money, I soon forgot about him hitting me and everything else. And it was just like, wow, I've got all this money now. Like, he would just pay me a flat fee of 15 pounds an hour, which back then was Fantastic. I was making five pounds an hour at my nine to five job. But when you look at the money that I was actually bringing in, it just doesn't even scratch the surface. Were there any other instances where there was physical abuse? Yeah, so when we moved into the bigger apartment, that's when more girls started coming into the, into the apartment to work for Andrew. And that's when I just witnessed so much, like verbal, physical, not just to me, but the other women involved, and it just got worse over time. Andrew would call us lazy hoes. I saw him smack girls with a belt because she wanted a lion. He used to, um, he used to strangle us as well. <laughs> there was another time when he came into the bedroom, me and the other girl, we would sleep in the same bed with Andrew. But at this time, the girl had a partner, so she was not interested in Andrew at all. And I had gone to the shower, I came back, and I noticed he was... Like, I saw him raping her. <laughs> and, um... <sighs> when he threatened to beat me up in the bathroom and he said, oh, I don't give a fuck if you call the police, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's kind of when I knew, you know, I had to get out of there. I stopped working for Andrew about March, April time and I went to the police shortly after that. Nothing was done, really. They didn't take me in for questioning, they didn't interview me. The other girl that he had raped, she went to the police and then that's when they arrested him and took him into custody for, like, two days. When um, Andrew was arrested, we were taken in for a proper interview and it kind of just got left. I would send emails asking them to update, I'd hear nothing back. When we reached out to Hertfordshire Police about this, they had this to say. We acknowledge that there were some delays to the investigation. This was addressed at the time and apologies were made. The case was only closed in late 2019 after a case file had been sent to the Crown Prosecution Service and they took the decision not to prosecute. All those involved in the investigation were further updated at the time. The Crown Prosecution Service said, in this case, we carefully reviewed all the evidence provided by the police regarding each complainant and concluded it did not meet our legal test and there was no realistic prospect of a conviction. We sent a letter to each complainant explaining our decision not to charge. 
When he went into Big Brother, that's when they started to take things seriously. He's on TV, um, we need to get him out. They told me, oh, the producers don't want to release him because he's proving to be entertaining. He was removed because of this ongoing police case. And it kind of just got left at like 2016. Who's with that? You decide. We reached out to Banerjee UK, the company behind Big Brother, and they said, as soon as we were made aware by Hertfordshire Police on the 8th of June 2016 that Andrew Tate was being investigated by the police, we began a process of extensive consultation with Channel 5 and legal teams, including the lawyers representing Andrew Tate. During this period, and whilst we sought to clarify the details required by Channel 5 on the police investigation, Andrew was closely monitored at all times. He was removed from the house on the 13th of June. And since then, has anything come of it? Unfortunately, they turned around and just said, oh, we can't continue this case anymore. It's just insufficient evidence. It's, we're not going to take it to court. You witnessed the rape occurring. Did that not count as evidence for them? No. Um, they openly said it's really, really difficult to prove rape. Very difficult. In the UK, only one in a hundred reported rapes result in a charge, let alone a conviction. I think people have this perception that if you tell someone that you've been raped, that that person instantly goes to prison. They don't realize that it's so, so hard to convict someone of rape. In a statement issued via his lawyer in Romania, Tate denied assault or rape. He said, they wanted money because I fired them. The police understood after the investigation that I am innocent and the police found messages from the girls' phones where they were talking between themselves and planning to lie about me. Sally said, the CPS sent a letter saying that one of the reasons they didn't charge Tate was because they found voice notes on our phones where we talked about whether we should tell the police that he gave us alcohol. We were talking about it because that is what happened. He used to get us drunk. You know, you see all these young men talking about how he's such a great guy and he's their idol and stuff, and that's so difficult to see. There are better role models out there. Don't be fooled by all the money and the nice cars and all the women. Working on yourself and becoming a better man and better mindset yeah, but real men don't lay their hands on women. Seriously, real men don't lay their hands on women. Like I said, I don't have much to say with regards to this, but drop your comments. And I think I'm going to do a follow up with regards to this video since the original video will be talking about the opposite of the shock of the night. So I will do a follow up video with regards to this video. And probably, you never can tell if this should blow up there. I'll do a complete series of the entire and take this and uh, take this and put it around there and make it for you guys to see. Thank you so much. Peace out.